and a sock. In the set. They're off. Race over five. Market in play. On the extreme right, Auckland Lodge with the noseband is fast to win. Heads over towards the grandstand side running rail. Captain Corcoran is showing good pace with this as well. Extreme left is Rose Bandit. White colours de is with this and Lady of Desire in a dark jacket. Yellow hoops on the sleeves. Then Tanisok, the best turned out winner races in company with Rain Cap. And all that means that Mr. Trevor narrowly is the back marker. They've coming down towards the two mark now and Auckland Lodge on the right with a nose band a rose banded on the extreme left between those Captain Corcoran then comes Lady of Desire Tanisok under pressure behind these and then comes Debortree and behind those then is Mr. Trevor well inside the last furlong rose banded Tanisok out after this still there's Debortree Lady of Desire in with a chance as well Debortree in the white jacket in the center as they race towards the line and it's Debortree who wins to Rose Market in play. Race one is the Don Omega Milk Maiden Hurdle over two and a half miles, shortest run to the first of 12. And over in front is Grozny, followed by Rosa Gloriosa, in the palish pink colors, the easy to pick out gray. These are followed towards the second flight by One for Joe. These are tracked by All Thumbs Up and Rings and Joe. Mahler's Glory is up with the leaders. On the outside is JJ the Yes Man running the rail as Real Politic. Two circuits to race as they make the bend towards the two mile starting point. Bit of a run before they reach the third. And Grozny is the leader by two lengths to Rosa Gloriosa. Mahler's Glory next on the outside of One for Joe, who is handy on the inside as they approach the third flight after one for Joe is all thumbs up and JJ the yes man rings in Joe and real politic. These are followed by noble expression. A couple of links back to meters and masks as they continue right down the far side of the track. In company with meters and masks is pull your socks up. And these are followed by Babylon Beach and the Hallmeister is next with my Capel Island. A couple of links back to Flora Brown as they make tracks to the next flight on the far side. The final couple clearing this one. Blue Stack Mountain. It's towards the rear of the field in company with La Scala Note. Significant run back to the three flights in the straight and it's Grozny and Dennis Hogan showing the way from Rosa Gloriosa, Ono Brian. Mahler's Glory is just moving into second place for James O'Sullivan. They're followed closely by one for Joe, Philip Binwright, as they turn into the straight to the first of three. All thumbs up next with JJ the Yes Man and Real Politic and Rings and Joe facing the first of the flights in the straight and it's Grozny, white and blue jacket, rising a couple of links in front of the grey rose of Gloriosa on the left. Is Mahler's Glory. The way to the inside is one for Joe. As they've just completed a circuit. All thumbs up next with JJ the Yes Man and Rings and Joe and Noble Expression. Onto the flight in front of the stands and the last one next time. Coming towards the halfway stage and it's Grozny yet to be headed. Pursued by Rosa Gloriosa, one for Joe. Then Mahler's Glory and all thumbs up. JJ the Yes Man, Rings and Joe. Meters and Masks and Babylon Beach. Real Politic, Noble Expression. The Hallmeister, four links to my Capel Island. And then Flora Brown. On the outside is Pull Your Socks Up. And La Scala, no take attached at the back of the field. My left to go. They're inside the halfway stage. They've five flights left to jump. And the Dawn Omega Milk Maiden Hurdle. Grozny, one for Joe Rosa Gloriosa. These three opening up a healthy looking advantage over the fourth running all thumbs up as they head on towards the seven furlong point with four flights left to jump. And it's the principals in the first three positions, Grozny, one for Joe, Rosa Gloriosa, then all thumbs up brings in Joe, Mahler's Glory's lost ground and then Babylon Beach as they race to the flight inside the final three quarters of a mile. Grozny, 
attempting to make every single yard of the running is tracked two lengths back by one for Joe, then Rosa Gloriosa, who's lost ground to the leaders, then Babylon Beach, who's emerging from out of the pack with rings and Joe, and then all thumbs up and meters and masks, the Hallmeister Mahler's glory, JJ the Yes Man, noble expression, my Capel Island, and then Flora Brown. Heading for the final turn with three flights left to jump and Grozny has a companion, one for Joe, moves up smoothly on the rail. The pair have opened up a four to five length advantage over Rosa Gloriosa, then Babylon Beach, Rings and Joe, all thumbs up, coming to the third last flight. Nothing between Grozny and one for Joe. Being pulled up as real politic as they jump the third last. One for Joe leads for the first time in the race, heading towards the second last. From Grozny and then Rosa Gloriosa, who's keeping at it in third. All thumbs up is staying on with Babylon Beach at the second last. And it's one for Joe, opening up a couple of lengths advantage in between the final two. From Grozny, Rosa Gloriosa, all thumbs up. Babylon Beach final flight coming up. And it's all for jo uh, one for Joe over the last. From Rosa Gloriosa, Grozny and all thumbs up and it is one for joe who's getting his juice here for the blue eyed bridge said market okay. in play one of the best ones out was roman miss the gray horse in the maroon colors gloweth is heading over towards the near side running rail the only one to do so at the moment as down the center pui mary in the white cheek pieces and zulu girl show pace luxy lou's not far away up the center as well sienna breeze tracks them in the two-tone blue quarantini in green and towards the right hand side red red robin Allaby with the pink cap and Gert Lush in the pink and orange as they make their way downhill, racing towards the final five, and then we'll have quite a stiff climb. So out in the lead, in the centre of the race course, the Zulu Girl with Roman Miss. Not far away is Gloweth under this near side running rail with Red Red Robin. Fetna in the grey colours. Pui Mary's just lost a little bit of ground as Allaby comes next with Quarantini and Sienna Breeze, and Gert Lush is still at the back of the pack. So Roman Mist out in the centre in the maroon colours with three furlongs to travel with Zulu Girl, Luxie Lou in the blue jacket, Quarantini in the green, Gloweth under the near side running well with Red Red Robin as Zulu Girl now commits as they take the rise and run downhill towards the final two. Zulu Girl and Roman missed with Luxie Lou in third place. Uh, down to the near side, still off the pace at the moment is Gloweth and it's Zulu Girl who runs down towards the final furlong, still trying to hold off Roman missed In third place over on the far side, trying to run on is Allaby with Luxie Lou, but Zulu Girl for Dylan Hope. Hogan still has the lead. Roman Mist is now two lengths down and out in front. Zulu Girl is moving further away. Bucket in play. Six lens. Hauser Black, a pale jacket, wants the lead more than wears Jeff, though, and has gone past him to take it up. Over right, Pale Jacket is in third place at the moment, now going second as they run uphill round the loop. Uh, the blue and red colours of uh, Home Before Dusk is against the running rail back in fourth place, a position he holds by about a neck only to Regal Mirage, and there's still five or six lengths behind to Air Poet, is content to bide his time at the rear of the field. So they're about to turn right-handed into the home straight, and Callum Rodriguez on Hauser Black leading now to Joe Fowler. Standing on Override has moved into second. Best turned out winner Where's Jeff and Joanna Mason in red colours got out first but is restrained in third position at the moment. Regal Mirage, a pale jacket, darker sleeves for David Allen off towards the right. He's just about in fourth place. Sam James is on the running rail. Home before dusk in blue and red colours catching them. Jamie Gormley on Air Poet gradually getting closer to the others. So he's having to work a bit to do so. Heading down with just uh, the closing stages coming up and Hauser Black being ridden along in front. Overright has loomed alongside. On the right is Regal Mirage making progress. Where's Jeff in the red is a little shorter room at this stage as they head down between the two and one. In the centre is Overright. On the left is Hauser Black. On the right is Regal Mirage. A length behind those is Where's Jeff and then still there with a chance home before dusk and air poet trying to run on as well now the gap comes for where's jeff but nearest to us home before dusk between those is regal mirage running to the line the blue and red home before dusk the red jacket of where and that's it we mark it the seven mark it the in play was alfie's watchers the grey, holdenhurst heads over to the near side in company with grandstand up the center three card trick and they're right across the course with Viola Park staying right over towards the far side. 
So reaching the rail is the grey Holden Hurst, three-car trick with the white nose poking out of that uh, visor. They're being followed by the market leader Mostalim in the noseband yellow and red and Tally's son in black and yellow. Just moving off the heels is Purple Sandpiper ahead of Grandstand, then Global Acclamation, and that leading bunch is completed by Soldier's Son. And they have a break of three or four lengths over a couple that are already being ridden. They are Hot City, Alfie's Watch, and Viola Park is quite well behind towards the centre. So well past halfway, passing the three, three-car trick for Ray Dawson and the grey Holden Hurst. Mustalim's quite hard at work, but coming between that pair with Tally's Son, Grandstand trying to uh, get a run up the inside rails, just having to sit and sit Upper, then Soldier's Son, Tally's Song, Global Acclamation, and Purple Sandpiper. Still out in the lead is the Grey Holden Hurst. Mustalim under strong pressure. Grandstand under the near side with a red headgear. Then three card trick and Soldier's Son. And Holden Hurst is finding more here and beginning to pull clear. Holden Hurst for Luke Morris. Market in play. Premier event centre handicap. And uh, just rain back Dartington under a, quite a keen early hold as the light green of Emran. And Mars Landing, who's right up there as well in the two-tone blue colours with the white cap. Then very keen after the break, Dartington with the purple sleeves. Out wider in the pink jacket is Mars a bit. And at the back is Eton College. Course winner here over Shorter as Dartington continues to refuse to settle. So racing around the top turn and it's Emran who goes on by half a length to Mars Landing and Pat Dobbs in second. Mars a bit running a bit wider for Oshin Murphy. Then up on the rail is Dartington and Martin Dwyer. The grey jacket at the back is Eton College and PJ McDonald as they freewheel down the hill with five furlongs to go. Emron is in front, but they're not going much of a gallop with Mars landing in second. Out wider, Mars a bit. Still keen is Dartington over on that rail. In behind is Eton College, but only three lengths would cover the quintet as they race inside the final four furlongs. Emron in front from Mars landing. Mars a bit is only a length down. And then in behind Dartington and Eton College, still only two and a half lengths separates the five runners. Heading inside the three furlong pole, Emran now being pushed along. Mars Landing is still travelling strongly, so is Mars a bit out wider. Dartington now just being pushed along, as is Eton College, as they race down inside the two. Mars Landing still travels well, upsides Emran. Still there, though, Mars a bit poised to pounce under Oshin Murphy. Dartington looking for a gap, just giving a slight bump to Eton College as they race down towards the final furlong. Mars a bit going on now, moving into the lead. Mars Landing can't go with Mars a bit. Then on that far side, Emran, Dartington, Eton College trying to finish down the outside, being pushed out though, Mars a bit under Oshin Murphy, another one for... Doors here, the beige of Mackie on the one who went to post early was the slowest away. Clay Lagazzoni in light blue wants to be in front and has zoomed through to about a two-length lead already. Uh, the nose-banded head of Siena Dream is in second place around the outside of the blue colours of Clotherholm and then in beige and red is Frog and Toad. Uh, then the grey horse, Chinese Spirit, he races up on the inside of Depp in yellow colours as they come to the turn into the straight. The lead is getting away here, Claire Regazzoni. Uh, at this stage, Micmac is last but one as they turn into the home straight and begin the run down towards uh, the final half mile. And uh, Claire Regazzoni has got this lot very well strung out. Furby is the back marker now as Macchione, who started slowly, has gone past him. So Clay Regazzoni leading by three lengths or so. Sienna Dream in second position, a gap to Clotherholm, a gap to the others who are headed by Depp. And then Frog and Toad, and behind this, Macchion and Chinese Spirit, and behind that then is Mick Mac, and the back marker is Furby as they're heading now to the uphill run. Clay Ragazzoni inside the three, he's gone fast here. Can he maintain the gallop because he's still clear by four or five lengths? Sienna Dream in second position, then comes Chinese Spirit, and then running on is Mick Mac and Clotherholm. Behind those is Macchion, they're heading towards the last fellow, and they haven't caught him yet. Clay Ragazzoni tried to steal this and leads by about five lengths. Mick Mac in the blue and pink is joining Clotherholm and Chinese Spirit behind those. They've a hundred yards to go. Clay Ragazzoni still. It's a three length advantage with Callum Rodriguez, who is guilty of theft. He stole this on Clay Ragazzoni. Chinese Spirit. used to go into the starting stalls and Pedro de Styles was slow away. So, out in the early lead, Dr. Nuno towards the near side, the old gold with the sheepskin noseband and the white face of little Miss Lily, well to the fore, in company with Vincenzo Cacotti, 
and they fill the first three places. Vincenzo Cocotti, the grey, on the right-hand side as they pass the five. Hitching, the second of the greys, is on the running rail, alongside Porter in the jungle, with between the pair, the white-faced four feet. Bibobba Lula in the yellow colours comes next, with Diamond Cottage, Raha, and the slow-starting Pedro de Style. So Little Miss Lily pressing on as we head down towards the halfway stage. Vincenzo Cocotti in second place. On the running rail in third is Dr. Nuno, as they pass the three. Porter in the jungle comes next, just ahead of four feet. Bibobba Lula is being ridden. Diamond Cottage making a little bit of ground, hedging under quite strong pressure as they make their way with two and a half furlongs to go. Vincenzo Cocotti with on the outside Porter in the jungle in the noseband coming to challenge. Dr. Nuno comes next head of four feet and Diamond Cottage just over a furlong to go. Porter in the jungle. Vincenzo Cocotti, Dr. Nuno under the near side running rail out in the centre is four feet. Porter in the jungle edges over to the rails. Dr. Nuno and right out in the centre four feet but it's Porter in the jungle very slowly away at the back of the field as they head through the first furlong. Marching Army broke very smartly today and is into the early advantage. Platinum Card is out wider of the pink and white of Diavolo. The black and colours of Adrastus is up there, who also broke much more smartly than debut. The orange sleeves of Jasmine Joy on the inside. A bit keen in behind in the striped jacket in the green and yellow is Sheringham. The tall order back from a long absence of William Buick in the blue with the white stars. And Lantean is already tailed off out the back. Uh, it's trying to somehow close the gap, having lost a good 10, 15 lengths at the start. So climbing and assembling into some sort of order, Marching Army has the advantage from Platinum Card in second, followed by Jasmine Joy the filly in third place. Adrastus comes next, without wider we have Diavolo, then up on the rail is Sheringham, followed by Tall Order and William Buick, and Lantia now only three lengths behind them as they went fairly slow around that turn, has been able to try and close the gap. So heading down towards the final four and a half furlongs, Marching Army in front, Oshin Murphy seeking a treble on the card, tracked through by Jasmine Joy, Platinum Card, the big prize Hamilton winner is right up there as well. Being pushed along, Adrastus has been overtaken by Diavolo, Sheringham is tight up on the rail with Tall Order who's just tracking Diavolo, then comes a ridden along Lantean as they make their way towards the final three furlongs. Marching Army by ahead, tackled by Platinum Card. Diavolo's going well. Tall Order now shaken up to try and close the gap. Sheringham's on the far side. Jasmine Joy's going well but needs room as they head to and towards the final two furlongs. Marching Army by the rail. Diavolo trying to challenge him between his Platinum Card. Tall Order out wider. Jasmine Joy is trying to find a seam and is trying to make some headway under Daniel Musket but Marching Army still has the advantage from Platinum Card. Diavolo, Tall Order out wide, taking an age to get going. Jasmine Joy now switching towards the far side and Marching Army he still holds the advantage. Tall Order trying to get going in second, but he's got about two and a half lengths to find on Marching Army. Oshin Murphy from the front, and Marching Army completes a treble for Oshin Murphy. Marching Army wins well. Tall Order Market second, suspended. Platinum card and a race away then. Uh, Market in Doom, play. The last one to get into stride. Again, Spore Purple and White was out quickly. Archaic Treasure, the grey, up on the inside. Goes through to pass him, though, as they begin to settle down. Kiskadi is behind these, and then comes Star Shakira, who in the uh, blue jacket races around the outside of Imperial 8. Braze of Dune is a little outpaced in the early part of the race and is uh, detached from the others at the back of the field. Keep the faith in the beige and red is running green but is in fifth or sixth place at this stage and then comes Mazza step in a pale jacket on the inside of Mr. Gambino. Willie dances behind those and then comes Tau Tartis and they're about a length ahead of the red colours of Telly Red and they're well clear of Braze of Dune as they head down the home straight then and it continues to be Archaic Treasure who has the advantage. Leads up here but only a very narrowly to the purple and white of Gainsbourg with Kiskadi to the right of those in a maroon jacket, pink armlets, right in with the leaders. Green and white of Imperial Aid is tucked away. She's against the running rail in company then with Star Shakira in blue and white colours. These are followed by Keep the Faith of Mr. Gambino and Mazza Step and Willie Dance. And then comes Tau Tartis and Telly Red and Braze of Dune is still behind those. Two furlongs to go. One from the left is Gainsbourg and Danny Tato coming through to take it up now. Going on to in the white and green of Imperial late giving chase. Star Shakira's behind this. Then comes Kizkadi and behind those is Archaic Treasure but it's Gainsbourg with Imperial Lake trying to catch him as they race towards the line. Gainsbourg in front. It's only a length now Imperial Lake. Who is it? 
day on ahead of my old lady and then Viking horde war god landed with a fractional advantage racing in between the final two flights and it is war god and Emir de Rhodes the pair have moved away Who from Alabaster and Igor de Mott final flight coming up nothing between war god and Emir de Rhodes who stepped at it so Alabaster slight mistake in third brings on the final 150 yards war god stalls, and Emir but, uh, de Rhodes who's battling back on the inside Emir de Rhodes and Jordan Gainford have pulled it out of the fire from War oh, God. Long way to fucking horn has nipped the left to go. Who is it is gradually moving forward? Always charge at that wider He's course. Forward, China Princess get the dream run up the again. inside. And Igar Baron Garu are afternoon. next there in fifth and sixth. Significant rule four message to follow as out in the lead, Just Glamorous shows the brightest speed and lead secret handshake. In third place, under curfew in the pale blue with the white face and Lomu, as the speedy Just Glamorous is already burning along here as they climb uphill to the first two furlongs. Just Glamorous for Josie Gordon has the lead from Lomu to the right-hand side for Laura Pearson. Yellow and white colours, secret handshake Holly Doyle and under curfew for Molly Phillips, who's charting a course closer to the near side running rail as they make their way down inside the final two. Lomu on the far side and Just Glamorous. These two still head for head. Under curfew in third, just hanging slightly, making it a little bit awkward for the rider as they've got a furlong to go. Lomu and Just Glamorous have had a real good set too. Under curfew could yet join in on the near side. Just Glamorous has the advantage. Under curfew is finishing strongest. Lomu on the far side. Under the mart a break of four lengths to less said the better cool line bluebell vodka society and diaspora for the jump heading to the second and final one in the back straight not a whole lot to choose between naturally blonde and Malali. these two continuing up front as they've done from the outset finding joy has responded to some urgings passing us the last time has gone up to Almost contest the advantage, the Newtown Perry, Maria Francesca next with hopefully closing from out of the pack is my friend the wind and trouble and strife, dreamy leamy's trying to get into it and also trying to latch on is Elite Demart. As Naturally Blonde has re-established a sizable advantage, lining up for the final three from Finding Joy in second and then Maria Francesca, Newtown Perry in trouble and strife, Malali has dropped away, then my friend the wind, very bad mistake by the leader naturally blonde absolutely cloppered that third last flight finding joy elite them up runs on the orange jacket on the outside of my friend the wind this is the second last much better from naturally blonde that time it was elite them up that blundered finding joy and my friend the wind dreamy leamy is next and trouble and strife coming to the final flight and it's naturally blonde opening up a lead once again and has it in the bag now and second is finding joy and then my friend the in play we almost, we have in fact lost one out of the stall. Seven pockets is unseated. Cameron Noble took a bump and right out the back is Leroy Brown who's completely blown the start and this British Stallion studs EBF novice stakes. A bit of early drama there on leaving the stall. Civilian is out in front. Marajan is out very wide on the course being followed through by one night in Milan. Then in behind that is Forza Auto with the nose band, the white and yellow colours. It's time to shine on the inside. Agent Sayanoir is running a little bit wider of Melgate Mystic and Leroy Brown is completely tailed off. A civilian under Andret Seni has the advantage. The Dieppe winner, first start here in the UK, moving on then from Marajan and Jim Crowley in second place. One night in Milan, Billy Garrity comes next with Forza Orta, Kevin Stott's comeback ride, only four lengths off the gallop. They're pretty well spread out already as they start to make their way down towards the home turn. Agent Sayanoir for Dougie Costello comes next with Melgate Mystic chased along that it's time to shine who's well and truly tailed off and Leroy Brown lost all chance at the start. So civilian in the lead heading around the turn and heading down towards the final half mile to Marajan in second place. One night in Milan for Billy Garrity still there being nudged along in third. Forza Rota up in trip today for Kevin Stott. Three lengths off this leader. Agent Sayanoir trying to close the gap. Then comes Melgate Mystic. Still civilian leads heading down towards the final three furlongs. Marajan's only a length down in second. Tracked through by Forza Rota. 
One night in Milan is being pushed along by the rail agent Seanoir and Melgate Mystic come next, heading down towards the final two. Civilian being pushed along. Marijan going well. Little look by Jim Crowley to see that Kevin starts getting more and more animated on Forza Auto. These three are a long way clear of anything else and Marijan takes over from Civilian. Forza Auto trying to get up sides. Heading to the final furlong. Forza Auto showing a smart turn of foot alongside Marijan. He'll need to battle back on that far side. Marijan and Forza Auto a little between them. Marijan is responding for pressure. Forza Auto can't get by and Marijan is doing enough. And Marijan will win it the second time. Wins at the end of Shea Cozzoli. Market Forza suspended. Race of it. Clear a civilian and then came one night in Milan. Jim Crowley has won on Marajan for William Haggis and uh, Shadwell with the race away Ma six foul on market the trip. in the play. Score is the slowest uh, in the stride as they begin the black jacket of Desert Cat, one of the first to show. Babelicious, best turned out winner on the right in the white colours is pretty keen. Ireland's eyes in the centre in blue and yellow. Nortiana's on the left. Grey and red jacket Gianzi is in company uh, with this, and they're followed through them by Three Hat Day, whose race is over the far side, preceded by Captain Valo, and Six Core is the back marker. As the black jacket of Desert Cat and the white colours of Bay Belicious are past halfway leading, in behind those is the centre island's eye, the yellow sleeves, Nortiana, red sleeves, the extreme left being uh, driven along. Captain Valo switched now towards the right to come with a promise looking challenge. Gianz is in behind that but as they head then towards the final furlong now and it's Captain Vallo and Rowan Scott who've come through the near side to take this up going on to Babelicious in second position. Ireland's eyes way behind these. The front two are miles clear and it's Captain Vallo handsomely. Babelicious in second. Ireland's eye moving through. Mark it. Six furlongs and away we Mark it in play. A decent line. Amongst those that showed Dash Tower, but the one exception actually was Alba del Soleil, who missed it and missed it by quite a bit. Seven or eight lengths was the gap as Tower Fock leads them up the middle. It's quite keen, clustered in behind the likes of Glamorous Crescent and the orange colours of Our Man in Havana. Also, Rhubarb just tracks the leaders at this point in time as they make their way through the first couple of furlongs. Rockingham Jill towards the centre of the course in company with Colden's Passion, who's out over there. Some nightmare in the two-tone green is towards the right-hand side as well as Colden's Passion receives reminders. Uh, near side, we have the likes of the Cheek Piece Secret Potion, but still out in the lead, it's Tower Fock from Our Man in Havana, Glamorous Crescent in third, Red Bravo under the near side running rail, then Rhubarb, uh, Rockingham Jill and Some Nightmare, who's right towards the centre of the course. I'm watching you comes next. But out in the lead, Tower Fock under Holly Doyle's making the best of his way home. They're off. George Morland is on Ma terms of them. Market well, in play. Self-catered wedding venue handicap. Fangorn got out really nicely under Sylvester de Souza in the light blue sleeves and stars and is moving to the far side with Ghost Rider George Morland in the yellow in behind with Maracas over on the near side and the nose band is Dajran who's broken well with the red those dark blue sleeves, tracked through by Sunset Salute and the black and pink colours. The attorneys held up at the back at the moment, along with double dealing as they race down the centre of the race course. And it's Fangorn who has the advantage over on the far side. The near side, we have Dajran. These two then moving on at quite a rate of knots, so about three lengths clear of Sunset Salute is on the inside of Ghost Rider. Far side is George Morland, the attorney in the white and green. Just creeping closer, pushed along now is Marakis. And then at the back is Double Dealing as they race down towards the final two and a half furlongs. Still travelling well, Dajran pushed along Fangorn to maintain the gallop. The attorney's trying to close the gap on them now with Marakis. Then Ghost Rider, far side George Morland, Double Dealing dealing, trying to wake up in behind down the near side, Sunset Salute, as they race inside the two. Can they get to Dajran? The attorney is going after this leader. Then in behind Fangorn, who can find no more. George Morland comes next, but it's Dajran in front. The attorney, though, is getting there as they race inside the final half furlong. Dajran being claimed by the attorney, who's showing a smart turn of foot close home, and the attorney will win under William Buick. In second Market place Dajran, suspended. By double dealing for...
from an outside draw comes across and has the advantage with Cedro. They hold the first two positions over Chestnutter with the white cap races alongside the rail being followed by Butterfly Island. After these races, Red Lynn on debut has plenty of cover down the inside. Wider on the course is Lottie Dent in the green and yellow, being followed by Cavalry Charge. After these races are Louise, the most experienced horse in the race, having her third start as they turn left-handed with four to go. Ko Samui is next, being followed by Basha. The back pair are De Vega's Warrior in company with Pad Joy. So turning and racing with three left to go in our opener, and it's Cedro and Danny Sheehy with the advantage by just under a length to Slamador being chased along on the outside. Chestnutters down the inside, just looks for a gap to open up against the rail from Butterfly Island as they straighten up and head into the final quarter of a mile. And it is Cedro and Danny Sheehy has made much of the running to this point. Slamador's after his effort in the centre. Now here comes Butterfly Island. Chestnutter still needs a gap to open up on the inside. Redlin and Bash are next as they race inside the final 200 yards. And it is Butterfly Island and Cedro. Redlin from the back of the field in company with Chestnutter who's got out late. But Butterfly Island, Redlin is coming. Then good break by Withwaff, who broke out quite smartly, as did Eastern Star, who in the yellow with the red cap, the nose band, over on the far side, a bit of early pace being shown by Money Honey, who's now just being reined back as coming through is Royal Guard, Black Orange Stars, Barma Lama, Pink Sleeves and Cap is up there, Glorious Rio in behind with Miracle Garden, Odd Sock Savannah's over on the far side, the dark green of Aigualette comes next. Then to, down towards the near side, At Your Service is alongside R, oh, that's grand. Then in behind those, we have Final Deal. With uh, having been up there, it's now been shuffled back through the pack and it's uh, about uh, five or six lengths off the pace as they make their way inside the two. Eastern Star down the centre. Royal Guard has been shaken up. Glorious Rio is going quite well. Barma Lama over on the far side, At Your Service. With uh, trying to get going down the near side. Miracle Garden's trying to make a bit of headway as well, but it's still Eastern Star in front, heading to the final furlong, tackled by Glorious Rio, Whiff Waff beginning to get going down the near side, is motoring home now. Eastern Star going on from Glorious Rio, Whiff Waff continues to close up and is staying on strongly, drifting towards the far side, Eastern Star, Whiff Waff can't get there, and Eastern Star doubles up for William Buick. And Market in it's play. A level break. Jero Bohm, though, having played up in the stalls, just having to be briefly ridden away through these early stages in this Goatstown handicap. And Ferry Bank is one of the first to show. Jero Bohm from the outside is going to cut across the field and take over in the hands of Ryan Moore. So the purple jacket of Jero Bohm has the advantage to no patience down the inside. Dixie Bluebell on the outer, white sleeves and a white cap, blue body on the jacket. Ferry Bank now just in front of this one in the yellow colours. Shahada has the noseband and Fly Girl in the first time visor. Races just in advance of the blue cap of Unchartered. So left hand they race with half a mile to go in the Goatstown handicap and it is the three time placed Jeroboam that has the advantage and Ryan Moore to Ferry Bank the Dundalk winner and Billy Lee in second. Third position for No Patience, a regular round here. Races on the inside of Dixie Bluebell. Just being niggled along by Kevin Manning on the outside. Shahada is behind these with Fly Girl in the first time visor. Back in the field, it's still uncharted as they straighten up. They're inside the final quarter of a mile of the Goatstown handicap. And Ryan Moore says go aboard Jurabome and quickly opens up two, three lengths. Ferry Bank is in second. Dixie Bluebells now asks for her effort in third. No patience is next. They race inside the final furlong. Jurabome is now about to be tackled by Ferry Bank. Dixie Bluebell, Shahada, no patience. And it is Ferry Bank that strikes the front inside the final 50. A Dundalk winner in January. Ferry Bank. Market suspended. Wins this one from furlongs in Ma the trip and market the stall, in play. Praise and bird to love are the first two to show. Kiavari grabs hold, and there is no pace in the early stages here. Uh, turn of phrase jump best with bird to love. Neither look as if they really want to lead. Castle quarter animation is pulling hard, and it is an absolute dawdle down the back straight. And the sponsors, Kashkai, would very much be in first gear as they race through this first furlong. Out in the lead, it's Bird to Love from, in second place, Turn of Phrase. Third, Illabella Fact on the inside of the nose-banded Castle Quarter, with Animation in fifth and Tundra in sixth. Kiabari, ridden with more restraint this afternoon, is in seventh place with Mrs. Mida in the pink jacket on that one's outside. Then Nick Vedder and three lengths back to Cafe Sydney. So down the hill, the pace has picked up. And out in the lead, it is Bird to Love, who has the call for Ellie McKenzie. 
in second place turn of phrase for Dylan Hogan. Tundra makes some ground up on the inside of Animation Illabella Fact and Castle Quarter, four in line behind the pair of leaders. Just clipping heels there was Kiavari. Laura Pearson was thrust up the horse's neck as the pace steadied again with Mrs. Mida, Nick Vedder, and at the back is Cafe Sydney. So turning now, passing halfway. Bird to Love with turn of phrase in second place and racing in third. That's still disputed by Tundra, Illabella Fact on the outside animation and Castle Quarter in the noseband. Kiavari and Mrs. Mida begin their challenges up the centre of the race course. Then the Nick Vedder and last of all is Cafe Sydney. Still very well grouped as they climb uphill, three and a half to travel. A Bird to Love and turn of phrase inside the three with animation, Castle Quarter. Tundra looking for a way out as both Kiavari and Mrs. Mida continue to make progress up the centre of the race course. The gap's now there for Tundra if quick enough to take it. Two furlongs to go. Castle Quarter in the noseband far side the cheek pieces. Bird to love. Then turn of phrase. Animation trying to make ground. Cafe Sydney just had to change course there with the white face. Mrs. Meader has hung right over to the near side. Bird to love. Tundra in the centre. Animation and Castle Quarter still out in the lead. Bird to love for Ellie McKenzie. Tundra coming with every stride. Photo between the two. Market suspended. Bird to love who led everywhere by possibly the last few. Market suspended. Two lengths to Whiskey Lady and then Soldier Solid who's at the back of the field in these early stages. None behind Montel Glory. Bambino's picked it up from Dice Box, saved by the river. Nose banded Barton Snow next. And then Malina Girl on the inside Fairy Tree, the final tree. Our Whiskey Lady, Soldier Solid and Montel Glory. At the top of the straight, a little over a mile and a half to go from here. Straightening up. On the right, it's Bambino and Derek O'Connor, closely attended by Dice Box and Tom Hamilton, the Star Jacket. On the left, it's Saved by the River and Aubrey McMahon. The three spread across the track, being followed by Barton Snow and Johnny Barry. In the center, it's Melina Girl and Joey Dunn. As they tack across to the rail. Fairy Tree next, Adam Feeney and then Whiskey Lady and Shane Bargery. The last two are Soldier Solid and Gulam Abbas. Montel Glory remains the back marker under Owen O'Brien. From first to last, five, six lengths. As Bambino's been headed by Dice Box and Saved by the River, Barton Snow in between them. As they return to their point of departure, and it's Dice Box with a narrow advantage into the bend from Saved by the River and then Barton Snow. On the inside is the Seven Bambino and then Soldier Solid has picked up ground on the outside of Melina Girl in the red and black jacket, then Fairy Tree, Whiskey Lady and Montel Glory, although the back marker very tightly grouped racing to the Seven Furlong Point. They've passed halfway in the first of the two bumpers, the Ring of Kerry flat race. And it's Dice Box and Saved by the River. Bambino goes back up on the inside of Barton Snow and then Malina Girl. Fairy Tree tracks them and then Soldier Solid as they head towards the six furlong point. And it's Dice Box. 20 seconds. Just with the edge from Saved by the River. As three came together there for a few strides. Fairy Tree. Melina's glory. Ten seconds. Nine seconds. Eight seconds. Dice Fox saved by the river and soldier solid. Makes almost three in a line as they turn into the straight and fairy three. Zero Melina seconds. And dropping back is Bambino and then Montel Glory. Barton Snow is weakened ahead of Whiskey Lady. Racing on up the straight, two and a half furlongs to go. It's Dice Box in front from Saved by the River. 
trying to throw down a challenge in the palish colors as fairy tree on the left is soldier solid and then melina girl and bambino racing to the final quarter of a mile and they're spread across the track fairy tree in the center comes to tackle dice box then soldier solid melina girl makes ground in between the two runners on the outside and then bambino racing towards the last furlong and dice box is digging deep on the rail has fought back to open up a lead in the closing stages and it's dice box and tom hamilton kit in play furlongs then slightly slow beginning by sir canford as they race through the first furlong in this evening racing at leicester races wednesday 21st july handicap villanelle has allowed Soromon now to go into a clear lead in the maroon and yellow. Very keen to lead, as was the case for the filly at Subble over hurdles last time. She's gone out very quickly here, opening up by four lengths. To Villanelle, who was a winner here last time out, in second place, being followed through by Team Lucky. Out wider in the pink cap is Silent Partner. Then towards the inside is Double Legend, who's being followed through by the nose banded Savitar with a red cap, Connor Murta, who at this stage is alongside Yorktown and PJ McDonald, the white sleeves, the black and red out wide of the colour chain, Sir Canford, the beige with the purple sleeves, and at the back of the field is Pushover, the grey, but well clear here, Soromond and Stefano Kirk, he's opened up by about 10 lengths as they start to climb and about to take their right-handed turn out of the back straight, although Soromond's lead is about 12 lengths now. So Soromond going on with a huge advantage, heading out of the back straight then with about 10, 12 lengths in hand over the pursuers, headed by Villanelle who at this stage has got Silent Partner and Team Lucky for company. Soromondo has gone off very hard indeed for the Amy Murphy Yard. From Villanelle, Silent Partner, then comes Double Legend. Team 20 Lucky seconds. By William Buick in fifth position. So they start to make their way down the hill. Plenty to do for Sir Canford, who's out wide of Savitar, Yorktown as well. 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8 seconds. Heading inside the final half mile. So Soromond still clear from Villanelle now being pushed away in second. Zero so seconds. Now under pressure. Team Lucky's got lots to do. Plenty of them have. And Soromond, there's a question of whether she will last out. Racing inside the final three furlongs. Soromond still well clear. Ten lengths to the good from Villanelle, who's in second place. Team Lucky comes next with Silent Partner. Out wider, Sir Canford's under pressure with Yorktown. Then comes Savitar as they head down towards the final two. Soromond's lead is still about eight lengths from Villanelle in second place. Then comes Team Lucky, silent partner, Sir Canford is out wider. Soromond heading towards the final furlong. Villanelle has reduced the lead to six lengths now. Soromond in front heading to the final furlong. Villanelle is giving chase and is beginning to close the gap. Then in behind is Sir Canford also with silent partner. Soromond is paddling in front. Villanelle's got three lengths to find. Then comes Sir Canford. Can Soromond last out? Leading by a couple of lengths. Soromond will last out from Villanelle. Soromond and Sunder Stefano Kirky. Market Michael. suspended. Sorry, mate. Go again, lads. Sorry, you didn't catch that. Watson team. So these hold the front two positions from Fit for Function, Emphatic, the Casino King and Sonantha in the black and red colours. Is having to race four wide around the bend as they race in towards the final half mile in the race. Academy Apprentice Handicap. Thunder Rain is on the inside, right against the rail, just being preceded by Fast Man. The Casino King is on the outside. They're being followed widest of all by Take My Hand, driven along as Foreign Legion. They're being followed by Howling Wolf, the black cap towards the rear of mid division crystal dawn and inductive are towards the tail end of the field in company with massa lebrens and foreign legion has lost his position so straightening it up and about to set it in fight the final two furlongs and sinanta with the cheek pieces tackles red heels fit for function just off the rail then it's drummond warrior so as they race inside the final furlong the race academy apprentice handicap it is red heel and sam ewing with the narrow advantage to drummond warrior and Sersha woods fit for function and tom kylie marshall is third but it is red heel and Drummond Warrior race inside the closing stage is going to be Red Heel will defy a nine pound market so suspended for Sam Ewing. They're off. Market, Racing market in play. Half miles for the opener. The visit at the races.com. Market movers, Mez, handicap chase. Cavicciana is the leader on their way up to the first of 13 fences. She holds a fairly sizable advantage going over the first, about seven lengths clear of just once Alpha Dorn and McAtee, who were followed over by Kira Royale and So Pat 
is dropped out last. So the free-going Cavicciana leads them into the first left-hander, clear of just once, who's a length up on Alpha Dorn and Makati, and then three lengths back to Kira Royal, who'd already be at least 10 lengths off the lead, and a further two lengths adrift is So Pat. As Cavicciana works her way around the northern bend and into the home straight. In splendid isolation at present, a good 10 lengths clear of just once. Over the first in the home straight, Cavicciana touched down about a dozen lengths in front. There was an error from uh, the back marker So Pat at the ditch in the straight. Cavicciana jumped it fluently. A dozen lengths clear of just once, Alpha Dawn, Makati, and then Kira Royal, and finally Sopat. Cavicciana at the fourth, which she jumps fluently. Twelve clear of just once in the two shades of blue. Cavicciana just having a wander on her way down to the fifth fence, but she took it well. Just once over in second, Makati third, Alpha Dawn, Kira Royal are fourth and fifth. And so Pat continues to be held up last and more than 15 lengths behind Cavicciana with a circuit to cover. So Cavicciana with a slightly reduced advantage down to about eight lengths. Just once continues to lead the chasing group. Two lengths in advance of Makati, who's a length up on Alpha Dawn, then Kira Royale. And so Pat detached by another couple of lengths into the city bend. Cavicciana rounds it about six clear of the closing just once with Alpha Dawn and Makati disputing third ahead of Kira Royale and finally So Pat. Leveling off to race into the back straight where four plain fences await them. Cavicciana eight lengths up again on just once closing in on fence number six. Cavicciana jumped it well. Extending the lead again over just once Makati, Alpha Dawn and Kira Royale. So Pat yet to pass a rival. Leader over the seventh, Cavicciana. Best part of 12 lengths clear once again. Makati has gone second on the outside of just once. Kira Royale making an effort to go fourth as they come to jump fence number eight. Cavicciana will reach it in front and a good 12 lengths clear of Makati and Kira Royale, who've both gone past just once. Alpha Dawn's dropped back into fifth, and So Pat remains last of all, having covered a circuit. They're going to the last in the back straight. Cavicciana and Keelan Woods at the final fence down the back, over it safely. Jockey has a long look over his left shoulder. In second, Kira Royale has gone clear of just once, and Makati, Alpha Dawn, and So Pat. And they're closing in on Cavicciana as they swing left-handed out of the back. So there's only four lengths now between Cavicciana and Kira Royale, with Makati a length back in third, just 20 once seconds. on her quarters in fourth. And then a couple of lengths to Alpha Dawn, and Luca Morgan's pulled the persuader on So Pat, who still has yet to pass a rival. 10 seconds, nine, eight seconds. They've got four to jump. Cavicciana leads them in by three lengths to Kira Real, who's got a head to one side. Makati will jump Zero to seconds. third place in front of just once. Alpha Dawn being left behind. So Pat remains the back marker. They're approaching three out the final open ditch. Cavicciana reaches it, but has been joined and passed by Kira Royal. Makati's moved up to hold every chance on the outside. The leading trio are several lengths in front of Junts once as they come to jump two from home. Kira Royal headed on the outside by Makati. Cavicciana can do no more back in third. Just Mark it in play. On at the one pace in fourth as the principals come down to jump the last. Makati and Kira Royal will be in the air together. Five lengths clear of just once moving into third in front of Cavicciana, they're inside the final furlong now. Kira Royal under Ben Jones has. The nation has built up a clear early advantage, continuing down the back straight, going further and further away from Misty's Gift and then Mulan West on the inside, the dark-colored jacket. 
another break in the field to quite escape and then Holcomb Hall as they turn out of the back straight Kevin's choice is next and then Altham Thule who's racing upsides the nose bandit poured the wine turning in mile and a half to go and it's Lakota Nation long way clear of Mulan West who's moved off in pursuit and then Misty's Gift who's relegated and placed third quite escaped next with Holcomb Hall and then poured the wine next on the outside is Ultima Thule coming on towards the two marker and it is Lakota Nation long way clear of Mulan West Misty's Gift quite escaped out wide, continuing on up to passes in the noseband with a circuit in front of them. There's the 15. Wait till next week. Ultima Thule next, and then Holcomb Hall and poured the wine. Next on the outside is Time Gents, as they're almost back at the point at which they started. Glendars Mahler is next, and then Kevin's Choice, who's lost a bit of ground turning to return to their point of departure down the back straight they go and with a greatly reduced advantage Lakota Nation Mulan West moves to be within a couple of lengths eight clear of Misty's gift and then Holcomb Hall and next on the inside is up the club who's made some improvement and these are being followed by Ultima Thule on the outside of quite escape and then poured the wine and next on the inside is Kevin's Choice. Mulan West goes through on the inside to give a good chase to the front-running Lakota Nation. Then Misty's Gift, Ultima Thule, and up the club next with quite escape. And on the outside is Time Gents, and poured the wine next with Holcomb Hall and Polar Peak as they turn towards the home straight. Half a mile left to go driven along as a clean pair of hooves. Weakening is Kevin's choice and Lindars Mahler has dropped away. Lakota Nation is trying to repel all challengers racing on up the straight with less than three to go. Lakota Nation in front from the outset under Abby Fitzgibbon from Mulan West and Liz Lawler on the inside who are making ground up to the leader. And then Ultima Thule and Jody Town and trying to get on terms. Misty's Gift, Tony O'Connor come next and then up the club. And Rochelle Murphy, Mulan West and Ultima Thule have got the better of Lakota Nation. Then Misty's Gift up the club and poured the wine. Time gents no show. And it's Mulan West and Liz Lawler galloping some way clear in the final furlong. Mulan West has got to run away with the Kenmare ladies Market, market in play. Celeste very much dwelt at the start and surrenders upwards five, six, seven, eight lengths to her rivals as they race on through the opening furlong in this Irish Stallion Farms EBF Phillies maiden and Madonna del Rosario in company with Corja Gujo. They're the first two to show. They have the advantage by less than half a length to Suera races down the inside, fitted with the noseband and the Aga Can colours. Himbuck two is on the outside of this one. Be adored tracks them on the outer with Punta de Piedi right down the inside. Livia Celeste after that slow star is already past one. That's Recyclable who is the back marker. So the field of eight which includes six newcomers about to race inside the final five furlongs and five of the eight hold entries in upcoming group races. It is Corja Gujo, one of those newcomers and Colin Keane who has the advantage to Madonna del Rosario and Ryan Moore in the second position. Third position then from Suera and Oshinor races on the inside of a driven long hymn book two and Kevin Manning. After these races the dark blue of Beadored and Lee Roche the checks of Livia Celeste and Shane Cross trying to get back involved after that slow start. Recyclable and Punta de Piedi is the one that's struggling out the back. So climbing towards the home straight in this Irish Stallion Farms EBF Phillies maiden and Corja Gujo trying to get her rivals on the stretch. Madonna del Rosario Suera and Beadored are the three that try to go with this Corja Gujo. After these is Livia Celeste Himbuk 2, Punta de Piedi and Recyclable. They're about to hit the 
final furlong. And it is Korjika Joe, Suweira, two newcomers who come to the fore. Suweira now on the outside comes to tackle Korjika Joe and quickly goes by in a matter of stride. It's going to be Suweira. She has an upcoming group one entry. And Market suspended. The novice's handicap chase. Elios Dor on the inside of Dino Velvet share the legwork on their way down to the first of 12 fences. They touch down together just over a length in front of El Baracho with full of surprises held up at the rear of the field. Coming to jump the ditch in the home straight. All four of them handle it safely. Full of surprises, not quite as fluent as the three geldings. As they come down to fence number three, Elios Dor, Dino Velvet. Elios Dor touched down just in front. El Baracho in the leader's slipstream. And full of surprises, switched off last of the quartet. Arriving at the fourth, Dino Velvet booted into it. Touchdown upsides Elios Dor. With El Baracho under restraint, just over a length off the front pair. And full of surprises, more settled a further length and a half away. So it's Elios Dor who leads them past the judge on the first occasion, moving on by nearly a length as they approach the left-handed bend at the end of the home straight. Dino Velvet in second. The pace is lifted. There are a couple of lengths up on El Baracho and full of surprises remains last of the quartet. Elios Dor by a length and a half on the approach to the entrance to the back straight. Dino Velvet in second, and then El Baracho. More settled now, the pace is upped. The back marker remains full of surprises as Elios Dor closes in on the first of four plain fences down the back. Number five, Elios Dor jumped it well. Dino Velvet over in second, ahead of El Baracho and full of surprises. Quickly on to number six, Elios Dor. By a couple of lengths, Dino Velvet a shade deliberate, El Baracho on his quarters. Elios Dor's moved on by three lengths. Back marker remains full of surprises. Coming to jump fence number seven, Elios Dor in the blue headgear, spot on from Dino Velvet. About two and a half lengths down, El Baracho a length back in third. Finally full of surprises on their way to the final fence in the back straight. Five out upcoming, Elios Dor, Harry Cobden with the advantage, a length and a half to Dino Velvet, El Baracho a further length away, full of surprises, shifted slightly out to the right, and she remains the back marker. Rounding the northern bend, Elios Dor by a length and a half, shade more, Dino Velvet shaken up by Alex Thorne in second, moving through on the inside, in third is El Baracho, full of surprises, well in touch, though she's yet to pass a rival as they approach the turn for home with four to jump. Elios Dor going great guns out in front, Dino Velvet being chased along to hold second from El Baracho, who's moving through on the inside, full of surprises, now finds herself outpaced, jumping the first up the home straight, which they're all over, and heading down to the third from home, the final open ditch. Elios Dor on the far right will lead over it, took it three lengths clear of El Baracho, who's gone second. Dino Velvet struggling to quicken, is back in third, full of surprises, beaten off in fourth. El Baracho coming at the leader, Elios Dor, but didn't jump two out as well as the leader. Elios Dor by two and a half lengths between the last two fences. El Baracho being driven hard. Harry Cobden still sat quiet on Elias Dor, who jumped the last fully three lengths clear of El Baracho. Dino Velvet well beaten off in third. And finally, full of surprises, Elias Dor will follow up his course and distance win of last month, making the bulk of the running here under Harry Cobden to win. In play. space the rank outsider on the outer of the field after uh, this front trio races up helio was second in this race two years ago 
as the quartet continue the run down along the back straight. After these is Leo De Fury with Maker of Kings on the outsiders and Jan Sinwan are the back pair, those two carrying the Aga Khan colours. So continue the run down along the back straight. Snapper Terry with the noseband and Shane Cross, last year's winning rider. He was bored Patrick Sarsfield on that occasion. Lunar Space gives chase in second and Kevin Manning. Sitting in his slipstream is Upheli and Billy Lee. Being followed in front of this one is Japan. After these is Leo De Fury and Shane Foley, maker of Kings, the Amethyst Stakes winner, and Colin Keane, Sinwan Ronan Whelan, and Erzin Jan and Oshin Orr. So they're about to race inside the final half mile. This field of eight, who've won 22 races between them, are led by Snap Terry, fourth in the Hampton Court, a Royal Ascot. He leads the field by two and a half lengths. Lunar Space is now just being niggled along in the second position. Opelli is on the outside in third, about four lengths off the leader. After these races, Leo De Fury being followed then by Opelia. After these is Maker of Kings trying to get involved as they turn and race inside the final quarter of a mile. Snapper Terry to be caught by Japan. Leo De Fury is next trying to stay on this season. A reappearance. Maker of Kings. Opelia tries to come between rivals. But Snapper Terry now about to be picked off by Japan. Maker of Kings and Sinawan comes through into fourth. Racing inside the final 100. Japan is now being tackled by Maker of Kings as they race towards the line. Japan may just have held on. Market suspended. E aqui estamos nós, depois das corridas já feitas. Foi o melhor dia até agora. De todos os dias até agora foi o melhor. Um, o mercado estava muito bom, estava... Estava com muitos backs, tinha muitos cavalos favoritos. Eu gosto de andar nos cavalos favoritos. Tinha muitos cavalos favoritos a ganhar, o que, que ajuda sempre. Em termos de redes, nem tive muitos redes. Tive uma, um red por cada 4 corridas, 4, qualquer coisa. Os redes que foram não foram grandes. Nenhum deles acho que foi, se não me engano. Não. Nenhum deles foi maior do que uma stake. O que para mim acho muito bom. Fica quase numa, numa porção de 1 um por 1. Um. Um, uma stake de green para uma stake de red. Acho que é bom, gosto, gosto disso. Gosto disso nas corridas que dão mais dinheiro. Tive aqui uma corrida que correu muito bem. Correu muito bem, deu duas stakes, muitas delas a darem uma stake. E muito mais consistente. Vamos lá ver se isto é para manter ou se simplesmente foi o mercado hoje que estava demasiado bom e correu bem. Foi aqui 2 euros, costuma, muitas vezes costuma ser 50 cêntimos, hoje foi quase 2 euros por corrida feita. Que é brutal, mesmo muito bom. E pronto, e é isto. Por hoje está feito, isto agora vou fazer um levantamento. Provavelmente vou deixar só 50 euros na banca. Dava para subir um patamar já, mas... Vou continuar com os takes 5 euros, pelo menos para já, para fazer um bocadinho maior consistência e se conseguir manter nestes, nestes registros aqui, que por volta entre os 30 e 50 euros era perfeito para mim. Oh, vá, desde os 25, acima de 25, por aqui assim, estes dias assim, era muito bom. Vamos ver agora se consigo manter, manter isto. Fala pessoal, fiquem bem e até amanhã.